Night gathers, and now our podcast begins. It shall not end until we're done talking. We are the princes that were promised. Welcome to the princes that were promised. It's me, it's Shawnee Wan, and joining me, as always, and from the sound of him, a super excited John. John, are you super excited? After this trailer, I I am very excited, but at the same time, I'm also very sad at the same time because this is it. That was the last trailer we'll ever get. No, I'm sure we'll get another trailer. I'm sure they'll do something else, you know, late March, early April. I'm sure they'll put some more footage in somewhere along the line. Probably the same type of footage. They'll probably add some new scenes, but I I just think like for some reason after I watched this trailer, I definitely had a uh, sentimental feeling in me that you know. Mm-hmm. It's it's coming to an end. This is the swan song. Look, we've been with these characters for nine years, and we know them intimately. Whether we like them or we hate them, you know. You took the words out of my mouth. A character like Cersei, even a character like Sansa. You still talk about them. You still bring up conversation with them. Right. They're an integral part of our lives, and they have been. They're fictional characters, sure, but- I want to stop you real, real quick one second. I want to- Tell the viewer, I've been pronouncing, and, I'm, and I think a lot of people have been pronouncing all this time. How do you pronounce the name? How do you think you pronounce the name Arya? Arya. Well, I've been pronouncing it wrong. I know that I always pronounce it like Arya, but it's really pronounced like Arya. Yeah, Arya. it's two syllables. Arya. After all these years, I have to start pronouncing her name correctly. Well, the funny thing is, I don't know how many podcast episodes passed. We had a discussion, and you brought up the point that. Arya was the fastest growing. Top five, one of the top five fastest right. growing names in, for, for uh, females, obviously, the right. past uh, few years. You pronounce Arya, Arya. Yeah, and so it's Arya. I say it real fast sometimes, and it may sound like Arya also because we're from New York and that's just the way we speak. Blame it on the New York accent, ladies and gentlemen. If you are listening to this from anywhere from other than New York, excuse me, Arya. Or Long, Long Island. Maybe we have been pronouncing it right, but it just sounds off. <laughs> I definitely intend to pronounce it right, but there have definitely been times that I pronounce it wrong. Sansa, Sansa. <sighs> right. But these people that are naming their daughters Arya are naming them Arya. But it's really Arya. Then really, right. it's really should pronounce Arya. I know somebody that named their daughter or meant to name their daughter after Arya. But they actually spelled it A-R-I-A. It is Aria. They did, but it's not an accurate. Yeah, it's kind of right, right, funny. Right, right, right. Anyways, I, I just wanted to throw that out there because I saw uh, say the George, there's a thing for George R. Martin where he said that. And he's not coming out of the woodwork, <laughs> by the way. We're here to talk about the trailer. And yeah, we've been intimate with these characters and more so for people that have invested so much time and been very passionate about Martin's writing about A Song of Ice and Fire, the books the show is based on. This isn't exclusive to you and I. I think it's for a lot of people. Watching Game of Thrones on Sunday night is not a, it's a personal experience, but it's also, it's a huge event, especially for you and I and our friends, my brothers. It's something we all talk about for the entire week. We, you know, theorize about, and it isn't as much now as the show's been winding down, but it has still been such a big part of our life, of our friendship. And it is sad to know that it's, that it's ending. It's sad. And when I said this is the last trailer we'll ever get, yeah, we'll, we probably will get another trailer, but this is the last, the first trailer for the new season of Game of Thrones. That's the last one we'll ever get. This has got me excited, but you're right. It's very bittersweet. Trying to put the emotional part to the side, was it effective for you? Do you think it gave too much away? Or are you? Uh, no, I thought it was fine. And I read some complaints. Really? You know, they, they wanted more. Like, what, 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 what uh, do you come think they're going to show? They're going to show, like, John with a sword in his hand, with a burning sword in his hand, going against the Night King. Do you really think they're going to show that? Like, do you really think they're going to show that? We'll get to it again, but do you like that they really didn't show the Night King, except for one shot of his horse's legs? I'm sure it's not his horse's legs. I'm sure it's one of the other White Walkers' horse's legs. But yeah, I, I like that because they really just built up the tension because they really set the tone 
that with the trail that it was like so dark. So you knew like it, it was a very dark theme to it. A lot of it was during night or on the ground in the caves, in the crypts. Mm-hmm. So it really was not a lot of light to it. The only place really saw light was that really that scene, a couple scenes maybe when it was outside of Winterfell and the dragons are flying over and the uh, scene in um, King's Landing when Cersei is there with Quiver and probably welcome on the Golden Company and Euron to King's Landing. I think this trailer may be, and I, you know what, I should have gone back and watched past trailers, but it would have been difficult to look at it objectively because I've seen- It's fresh in our minds. It's like you're, you're excited for the new, you yeah, know, right. anything for a new scene that like, it's like, you know, like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. But I think that this trailer may be the best one that they've put together because it brings us further into this world. It gets us- caught up in, a, in an odd way by not rehashing things that have happened, but it, it brings us right back to where we were at the end of season seven. It gives so very little away, but I think the, the real beauty of this trailer is it does, in a fairly strong way, function as a three-act story with a prologue, a beginning, middle, and end. We'll talk about it as we go through it, but looking at the Aria dialogue, that's like the prologue, the brand dialogue, that's like the act one the John dialogue, Act 2, Jamie dialogue being Act 3. Can I just say this right now? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, you, you know, we're wrestling fans. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you, you always talk about, oh, my God, that was the biggest heel turn of all time. I'm telling you this right now. We are going to be in the midst of the biggest baby face turn of all time in Jamie Lannister. Yes, agree. He is going to be doing things this season – that I'm telling you, people are going to forgive him for pushing Bran out the window. People actually might be saying, you know what? You might have been better off pushing and killing him. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know, dude. I'm just, I'm just saying, Jamie Ladd, I'm telling you that when we get to that dialogue, it was due to like, And if you notice that dialogue, was the same dialogue that Jon Snow said. To Mance Raider, I want to fight. I made a promise. You know, he said, "I might. I made a promise." John said, "You know, we. I made a. Pr- I, oh, you know, wow. Good catch. I wanted to. I wanted to find the fight that size for the living. Good catch. Good catch, man. Wow. You, he's. <laughs> so what you're saying is, his, this is going to be such <laughs> such a big baby face turn that when people go back and rewatch like, Game of Thrones yeah, and they rewatch episode <laughs> one and Jamie pushes Brad out the window, people are going to be cheering. Yeah, pretty much. Not, not everyone. Uh, there, there'll be a decent number, number of people that be like, yes, <laughs> yeah. it's the best part of this season. <laughs> Get him, Jamie. Get him. <laughs> yeah. Dude, don't worry. He gets better. <laughs> um, But we'll get to that. We'll get yeah. to, we get to really to more of the Jamie stuff. A couple questions before we get into it. Not necessarily questions, but things to keep in mind. Starting with a question. Which episodes do you think this trailer draws from? One, two, and three. No further than that. No further than well, well, we'll talk about possibilities, but I, I and, and, it, and it's going to be one of the first things we talk about in the Aria, Aria parts. Okay, and, I, and we'll talk about it right away. And I was talking how I was flip flopping on something, but I think it's just one, two, and three. And when I say episode three, I think it's very limited. Episode three, I think some of the start we the stuff that we see of the uh, the armies of uh, lining up and preparations. I think that's a, that, and that's it. That I mean, can just be episode two. They might just end episode two. With them all lining up outside of Winterfell and then cutting it <sighs> to wait to, could you imagine? Oh my God. Could you imagine? I can't, you unfortunately. Seven more days yeah. for that. You spoke off air about foreshadowing. You said yes. there's three. There's, there was three for that I, that I caught. Of course, I can't, I'm getting very old right now. I can't remember. When we get to the parts that you think are foreshadowing in the trailer, or at least the show is purposely trying to tease us. Right, thinking okay. that it's a foreshadow. I'm not gonna. I'm not saying it is a definite foreshadow. I'm not gonna say it's definitely gonna happen. But I think they're teasing us with foreshadow. Okay. The third thing I want to kind of keep in mind is, as good as this trailer is, it still left you wanting more. Well, yeah, it left you wanting more. But also, I want to keep in mind that DB Weiss said that he and David Benioff would have rather not had a trailer, and there's no need for a trailer for the final episodes. But to say that and then to have such a such an amazing trailer 
how involved do you think Benioff and Weiss really were if they didn't want to do a trailer in the first place? I'm sure they were involved because you have to make sure that someone's not putting out too much. My point being is this trailer, it's almost like it was the most effort Game of Thrones has put into a trailer. Trailer directed by George R. R. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Guys, I just had to do something. <laughs> I wanted to break into the TV biz. Yeah, so th- those things to keep in mind. And then mm-hmm. if you can remember, hopefully I'll remember when we're done, there's two kind of theories slash ideas that we've talked about a few times in the past. Perhaps we get a fresh take on these finally with a look at the final episodes, the final part of this sprawling epic saga. John, why don't you take it away? The first part of the trailer. All right, I think the best part we're going to do here is I think we're just going to try and break this up into the quadrants uh, of the dialogue. There's four people with dialogues, and I think that the best way is just to take each quadrant and the shots that we, the dialogue and and the shots that coincide with before, during, and slightly after each dialogue. So the first one we have, the, the, the trailer starts off in a dark room, mm-hmm. almost as if she's like playing hide and seek until she runs off frantically. And frantic, tell yeah. she's yeah, she's very scared. She's 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 breathing very heavy. This made me think of times that we've seen Arya scared or running for her life, and there haven't really been many. In the first season, she runs when Cyril Pharrell tells her to run. Mm-hmm. Season five with, uh, or is it season six? Season with six the waif? with the waif. Yeah, with the right. waif. But this seems this seems a little more. It just. There's more to this. Well, I think that she looks in this first part of the trail, I think she looks more frightened than she mm-hmm. was in either one of those situations. My first question for you is, I want to see what you say. Where do you think she's at right now? I think she's in Winterfell, and I think that a battle has gone badly. I don't see – John and Arya, I don't see as people that will retreat. Mm-hmm. Unless there's no other option. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a bleak situation. And she's in Winterfell. And I think they're trying to escape maybe through the crypts or Mm -hmm. the lower sections of Winterfell. I'm not sure. I know I always thought there was one way in, one way out. But I've read that that's not necessarily true. There are other ways out of Winterfell. There's a south way that leads to – I forgot where it leads to. But that's supposedly the rumored way that the – the people will run off to, to get away from. Um, and this is going through the crypts, uh, the Southern. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And they've showed the crypts a lot, by the way. Mm-hmm. They've showed the crypts a lot. Really, wait, let's make sure we make note of that. They show the crypts a lot. First saw this, the first few times I saw this, I thought, okay, Arya, she's in the crypts. She's in Winterfell, excuse me. And she's running away from most likely a white walker. Is she in the crypts when she is holding the dagger? No, no. But I saw it a couple more times, and I, I changed my mind briefly. And I said, you know what? I don't think she's in Winterfell. Where do you think? I think she's in King's Landing. Really? And then my mind was going off to, she's in King's Landing by the dungeons, kind of like where Eddard was kept. Really? Is this going to be a rescue mission that she knows where to go to? Remember in season one, she mm-hmm. knew where to go to, where she caught uh, Varys and Ilario uh, Mahatis talking. So she knows that area. She knows it just that she's been through it before. And maybe, I mean, she's a smart girl. She could probably recognize some things and, and figure out a way to get out. But then going back in, I, I don't, I don't know. But it's tall order. I'm, I'm going back in my original thought process because of what we just talked about a couple minutes ago. I think that this trailer, I think we only got shots from the first one, two, three episodes. And if Ari goes to went to outside to King's Landing, it won't be until episodes four or five or six. Mm-hmm. So I'm going back to. My original process, like you just said, that she's in Winterfell and she's being chased by a white walker probably. Or maybe something else. Maybe even more, you know, terrifying. Maybe a pack of wolves. Maybe a, some animals that have been turned against, you know, have been turned as wits. Mm-hmm. But more like I want to say a white walker, which then goes hand in hand where her, she's scared as hell now, where she's a little bit overconfident with, with the dialogue that we're going to talk about in a couple seconds, where she seems a little bit too confident. All right. Well, what, what was that dialogue? And I thought this editing was great to show right. Arya at her most frightened and, like you said, running frantically while intercutting it with this dialogue. As if she's like this, you know, the dialogue is, I know death, 
He's got many faces. I look forward to seeing this one. That's pretty arrogant talk for somebody who yeah. has not encountered. Right. Who's not right. Yeah. yeah. And she hasn't even encountered whites. Yeah. Let alone a white walker. Mm-hmm. But the shots that we see right now, quick shots of Davos over Winterfell for battle preparations. We see Arya running through Winterfell or it could be King's Landing. Again, I think it's Winterfell. Yes. And then it goes, and we, and we just mentioned Sean about the crypts. We see Varys and all the women and children. Varys <laughs> <laughs> Varys pulling his Janacenta slipped uh, uh, yeah, right. work over there, you know, hiding in the dungeons, mm-hmm. hiding in the crypts. And it's definitely the crypts. You can see the, uh, the Stark statues, the crypts in, in the back with the direwolf uh, statues in the back. Was that – that wasn't Lyanna's – no, Stay you definitely know there was a wolf there. Lana does have a wolf by her crypt. Okay. And then, as the dialogue is saying, I look forward to seeing this one. We see Arya, then shows her holding a weapon. It looks like it's a dragon glass dagger or spear or weapon of some sort. Mm-hmm. I look forward to seeing this one. It's just funny how they start you out frantic and she has that overconfidence and then you know it's, it's this overconfidence shows but it's kind of misplaced it reminded me a little bit of of rob stark in season one when <laughs> kellen says uh, i'll kill them all oh, I'll kill them all i'm gonna get them i think that was in the book i don't think i don't think that was in the show no no but it, did, it was in the books though it's, yeah, it was just so funny it did remind me of that we'll kill them all we'll call that initial stark overconfidence yeah <laughs> <laughs> They get it from their mother's side, for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Because I don't think Ned – well, definitely Ned was never that confident like that. No. No. I mean, so maybe a little <laughs> naive, yeah, but not confident. Now – So that's pretty much everything under the Arya dialogue. Right. And it is it, a dark setup for this, for this trailer. Yeah, and it fades April 14th. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's that final season, and then – before the brand dialogue, I think this is something we really have to talk about. And I have to make mention, because I don't like trying to take other people's ideas that I see on Twitter or YouTube. So I just want to make sure that I, I break it out now. YouTube, my name Gray Area, mentioned this. I got to think that it's possible. When we see the Golden Company arrive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I want to make sure, I, I want to say, before I get into this, that first shot of the three ships we see. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Such a good looking shot. Yeah. I don't think that's the goal of the company. I think that's Theon trying to trying to rescue Yasha. Because the, the next shot we see the goal of the ships, there's a hundreds of ships. Yeah. That shot we just see like three ships. I think that's Theon. Okay. But then we see the shot of the Golden Company. We see Harry Strickland, who at first glance, I think a couple people so they thought that was Jimmy Lannister. Can you look at that real quick? Well, you don't get much, you just get the back of him. Right. And it's a it's a very I, far I, shot. I, I had to pause it to see his right hand, and you see it's her hand and not and not a uh, metal, whatever you want to call it, fake hand. Right. So, okay. yes, it, it is Harry Strickland. I think we talked about before one of our podcasts that Harry the, the show's version of Harry Strickland's probably a combination of the book character Harry Strickland and probably John Connington mixed into one character. Okay. I, that's what how I would take it. I think it will have much less focus on, obviously – the John Connington aspect of it, the well, let, let, let's. I think we get into a big. I think we're going to get into a big discussion here. Two seconds. Well, I'm just saying the the part of John Connington that's I want to say admirable, but I don't know if that's a good word for it. But the aspects of that character, what he's trying to do, what he mm-hmm. feels his mission is, mm-hmm. I think it'd be more accurate to say that what you've been saying that Jamie will adopt that. Not that storyline, obviously, because they're, they're just foregoing uh, the entire storyline. He needs that line. Jamie needs that line. Yeah. Come on. He needs that line. Yeah, he does. And it's the only person that really can have that line. There's no one else that can take that line. It wouldn't make any sense. So, uh, you know, maybe Jorah, but Jorah didn't. Didn't fail Ray. He didn't fail no. Rhaegar. And Jamie didn't really necessarily fail Rhaegar directly he either. To, but, he, but he wanted to fight with him. He could definitely, they could definitely turn that in the show how he wanted to fight with said Rhaegar. Mm-hmm. Getting back on point, if we see that shot of Harry Strickland, is that sword black fire? John, I don't know. I want for these swords to show up, but I don't, right. I don't know if Benny and Weiss are going to go if, that route. I don't know, but but if that's black fire, that sets up a lot. 
that can set up a lot. I think it really can. I think that sets up the. I think that sets up. This is just for the show, not for the books. Mm. I definitely think that sets off the Golden Company betraying Cersei and siding with Danny and John, and 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 we see that sort of giving the John the rifle Targaryen King. What about Dark Sister? Some people said they saw a Dark Sister where Mira has it. Hmm. But it just I mean, it, it just sets up a lot of stuff. Will the Golden Company finally break off a um will they finally break their word? Will they finally, you know, their words as good as gold? Okay, so here's the tricky thing with the Golden Company, and it does I know in, in the books it's different. Well it par- it parlays into Connington and the boy who is being called and calls himself Aegon Targaryen. When John Connington arrives, you know, when Griff and young Griff arrive at the Golden Company camp, they are essentially breaking their word with the masters that have hired them, the people that have hired them. They're breaking their contract with them for John Connington's mission. But that is part of the deal that they made initially with Illyrio Mopatis, Varys, to go with John Connington and invade Westeros. It's tricky if they are breaking their word. It's also tricky because that's sure to play a huge part in A Song of Ice and Fire. But if you take out John Connington, you take out Aegon Targaryen, you just eliminate that entire storyline, then what is the purpose of the Golden Company? And why bring them in just as like a – they've done it before. Dorne being the best example, they could just bring them in as a, as a plot device just to kind of further the story along. So, all right, what is their function in Game of Thrones? They're just there. So, Cersei has peace of mind. So, it seems like Cersei has a plan for – negating on the promise she made to the Westerosi Alliance. She can do that because she has the funds from High Garden that she's using to hire the Golden Company. So she doesn't need the Westerosi Alliance. It's a ruse and Jamie's the dumbest Lannister for thinking that it wasn't a ruse. She's had a plan all along. She doesn't need the Westerosi Alliance. She doesn't need anybody. She's hiring the Golden Company. So it could just function as that plot device, or like you said, it, maybe Harry Strickland has Blackfire, and maybe it has a, a deeper part of these final six episodes. And I don't know, man. I really don't know. It could go either way. I'm leaning towards they're just functioning as a plot device because there's only six episodes left. But these are feature-length episodes, so maybe. Maybe. What do you think? I think it really just all depends I don't want to get into any kind of speculations on what could transpire because we're just talking about what's happening in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, but I think it just, if that sword is Blackfire, I think that opens up the realm that they're going to side with John and Danny in the end and they're going to break their contract with Cersei. It's either that or they'll end up just being henchmen, essentially. Mm-hmm. For me, and not to linger too much longer on it, but for me, I think it comes down to what I know of the Harry Strickland character. That Harry Strickland is obviously being based on. He's a coward. To quote John Connington, he's a coward. He's scared. But he goes along with the plan reluctantly because that's the plan that the Golden Company has had for many years. Put this boy they're calling Rhaegar's son on the Iron Throne. And obviously, once he's there, the top commanders of the Golden Company will get their own keeps and castles and start their own noble families and, and great houses. It's not just a, a, a noble thing that they're doing. They have no stake in who sits the Iron Throne. It is about money for them. But John Connington's, his relationship with the Lord Commander before Harry Strickland, whose name I'm forgetting, <sighs> but he and John Connington had a good relationship. And that guy was a man, a man's man. John Connington thought very highly of him. And he was rather suspect of Harry Strickland. And then once he sized them up in their initial meet and greet, so to speak, he thought of, of Harry Strickland as a, as a coward. So, based on the character they're basing Harry Strickland on, I'm leaning more towards the Golden Company or henchmen. So, that shot is before Bran's dialogue starts? Yeah, just as just right before it starts. After, like, we see the Chassel back, then we see Bran's dialogue starting, in which he says, Everything you did or where you are now, where you belong, home. I gotta think Bran... It's talking to John. I think so, too. And, and this is after the reveal. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like something he would just spew off of as John says, oh, my God, Bran, I'm so happy to see you. And then Bran will just be like, not even say hi. He'll just be like, everything you've 
done has brought you to where you are now, where you belong, home. And then Arya and Sansa will probably have to explain to John that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> for another time, John. Yeah, don't 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 worry about Bran. He's he's a little out there now. <laughs> he's shot. Yeah. We keep him in a wheelchair by the fire. You know. Yeah. He seems to like it. So now uh, the shots over the dialogue. We see Delora said, Tormund, Barrett the Darian walking through a hallway. Now uh, I'm not sure if that hallway is Winterfell. Could it be that they reached? Could it be that they're trailing behind? Maybe it's still at Castle Black, and then the Night's King army is already past them. Well, here's the thing with that: I don't see. Maybe there is a Lord Commander. There have been in the past Lord Commanders of the Night's Watch that have abandoned their post. Well, dude, there's no post to defend anymore. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. Done. Like, point being, I feel like Dollar said, as Lord Commander, would go down with the ship, so to speak. Uh, I was very surprised to see Beric Dondarrion. I thought, well, they're gonna probably give him an Austrian. They thought, unless they just keep him alive or something. We talked about before. If he, if they keep him alive and do something during a big battle, is he still taking on the Callan Stark role? And Callan's gonna do something. Cal- see, sorry, Callan Tully is gonna do something in the, sh- in the books. Yeah, and also in the books, Beric Dondarrion is not around. No, because he gave his two. Catalyst. So is he going to do something? I think I think you 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 had a theory or read a theory where he would do that to John in season God, seven. Please don't, please. No, don't. no, no. I I, I don't it, want that. It happen, just but. goes into more and more of that. You know, that John's a wit. Mm-hmm. But is there another character that Beric could choose to sacrifice himself for? Sandor Clegane. Sandor Clegane. That's a good one. I was, I was thinking Arya, but yeah, Sandor Clegane's even better. The only thing with Sandor is he, he's already, he's already been, yeah, quote unquote, died and, and been reborn uh, as, a, <laughs> as a slightly different character. But, I, you know, just just food for thought. I, I didn't think that he would survive past the opening minutes of episode one, you know, and then to see Ed Tollett. And the thing is, wherever they are, doesn't really look like Castle Black. I don't know. It just looks very narrow. Tormund, they were at East Watch by the Sea, correct? Mm hmm. So. Maybe they've retreated to Castle Black and they're not going straight for Winterfell. Maybe then they are on the trail of this army of the dead. It didn't appear like any of them looked very worried or very frantic considering what just happened, which was the wall collapsed. It was broken by a dragon breathing ice fire. I would think they'd look a little bit more frazzled. If I have to bet, I'd say Tormund and Beric went to Castle Black and they're about to set off. And come up the rear on the White Walkers, or maybe they discussed a plan where we got to get to John and, and Winterfell. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I guess they could send a raid. It's more likely if they somehow pick up some horses and ride around the army and somehow, some way. Yeah, send a raven or something and kind of come up the back, but they have to do something quick, obviously. So after that shot, we see Bran and Sam talking. Sam looks worried and looks like there's a cold breath, almost as if the White Walkers are coming. Okay. What do you think they're discussing, Sam and Bran? You think they're discussing John? I mean, I have no. It could be anything. What else would you discuss with Bran other than <laughs> <laughs> speculation? Could be anything. Could, uh, could be like you know, maybe maybe Sam is questioning Bran if there's anything he can ask him to see what he can look at, you know, in the past or something. Bran's like, "You're gonna have to help me to the toilet." <laughs> and Sam's like looking all worried. Damn it! <laughs> uh, let me get Jilly. I don't know if it's my favorite part of the trailer. But I think although it is a callback to Winter's Coming, or I initially thought it was, I thought it was Bran looking on as John and Danny approached Winterfell, but it isn't. You pointed that out. It, it clearly isn't. It may just be a character we don't know. It may just be some kid, mm-hmm. you know, to echo Bran climbing the walls to watch as King Robert entered Winterfell. That shot of John and Danny, that's a great shot. And we finally get not necessarily a bright tone to the color palette of this trailer, but it is a lot lighter and a lot friendlier, almost warm, particularly John and Danny. What do you think? The one shot real quick, we see Cersei and Quibre at King's Landing. Oh, that's before we that's see- That's before. Oh, okay, yeah, that's before. They're welcome to the Golden Company, aka and, and Euron. Mm-hmm. Cersei seems pleased. It seems like, you know, huh, my plan's working. Yeah. This is great. My father would be so proud of me. Mm-hmm. It looks like more master acting by Lena Headey this season. Mm-hmm. 
there's that twinge of sadness, almost like she realizes she has nobody outside of Quiburn. She has nobody to share this with. Well, the mountain. The mountain, yeah, the mountain. I'm sure he's really uh, emotionally fit for this. And she's brought back the Kingsguard, finally. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've revamped them. Yeah. I don't know who these guys are, though. <laughs> Version 3. Yeah. Do you think you think Quiburn's, like, made Frankenstein monsters out of other... I don't know. He was interested. He was pretty interested in that hand. Yeah. From the, from the, from the wit. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't think, no, I don't think he has time or uh, bodies to do it. I don't like the redesign. I did like the initial Kingsguard armor and costume design from season one. I like that a lot. But I mean, this is like too like retro or something. Yeah. It's just like, it almost is like, it's like too sci fi. It's just something about the right, helmet. Right. Exactly. Yep. To cover the mountain's face, I get that, obviously. I'm okay with that, but then for the entire Kingsguard to to look like that, it's it's not horrible. Yeah, I can live with it, but I, I think I would have gone a different route and shown shown some faces. But maybe it's just Cersei's thing. It's a black Kingsguard that doesn't distinguish themselves. Queensguard, rather, I'm saying Kingsguard mm-hmm. would be a Queensguard. What's after? Uh, well, then we get the uh, this is as he's saying your 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 home, and it's a huge shot. Of the unsullied army marching in Winterfell. Appears the Winterfell people are standing in crowds. We see that boy or girl, as we just mentioned. And then we see Don, John, Don. <laughs> Don John. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's going to be their son's name, Don. Yeah. Uh, Danny and John are arriving with Winterfell. Uh, Danny's on horseback. She's not on Drogon. She's showing more of a sign of, uh, as John wanted in season seven, more of a right. sign of peace, mm-hmm. not intimidation. You know, if she comes on the dragon, it, it's. I'm here as intimidation. I'm here to conquer. Yeah. That's not what she's right. here for. Uh, we see uh, Trogon and Rego flying over Winterfell. What a, as you said, what a great shot. Sansa's looking oh. at. She's just she's just amazed. Mm-hmm. Arya also. Yeah, that's a later that's later on the uh, on the. Um, Is it under the same section, the brand section? No. Oh, okay. It's later on. All right. Because after this, after we see. Trogon and Rago flying, we go into the John, the John dialogue, which is your basic Jon Snow dialogue <laughs> right. the past few years about with the others. They they're could have coming, taken that from any other season. Yeah. yeah, they're coming. Our enemy doesn't tire, doesn't stop, doesn't feel. It's like, we, we know, John, you've been telling yeah. us for, for a long time now. We just got to tell new people now. Right. <laughs> each, each, each season, he tells a, a huge different pe- amount of people. Uh, what do you guys know about the White Walkers? Yeah. Nothing. Great. Here's what you need to know. Yeah. So that one comes into one of the bigger, probably question marks of, of the of the trailer. And this is with John dialogue. Yeah. Right. Okay. John's in the crypts. I know you think it's Edward. I think it's Liana's. I think this is at the moment after he finds out who he is, because he's just looking all kind of like really freaked out. Right. And Danny comes over and she's like comforting him. All right. So if he, if he is really freaked out, does Danny know at this point? Yes. You think they're told together? Yeah. I'm just trying to think like what would, what would a reaction be to that? There's a shot later on the trailer where she's in like what the, uh, a room in Winterfell where she seems worried. Yeah. So it looks like that could be the time that she finds out. Yeah. Or it could be when she finds out that she's uh, prego. Mm-hmm. I think that she would handle it better than he would because he's she's gonna be like, "Hey, listen, my listen, our family, dude, it's brother, sister. This is we're we're not that you know, it's not as it's not that bad, John. Yeah, we're, practi- <laughs> we're practically not related. Yeah, <laughs> but um, <laughs> if this is a D where they find out and he and she is comforting him. Maybe it's also a sign of maturity on Danny's part also if she's comforting him on this news because this not only this news means that they're related, what this news means is Danny, John has a bigger right claim to the throne than you do. So this shows maturity on her end. Like this like, you know, Danny two years previous, like, you know, I'm it, I'm the queen, I'm gonna kill people with my dragons. Maybe, you know, She's okay. matured up, and at the same time, when Danny's spot, you know, listen, I mean, she's only known one relative her whole life, and that was Viserys. Right. So for her, this is actually, maybe she really, wow, this is... She's not alone. 
yeah, I'm, I'm in love with this guy. This is, this is my family. This is, mm. this is, you know, they said all these great things about, you know, my, my brother Rhaegar. Mm. He's Rhaegar's son. And wow, mm. hey, this guy is actually acts like Rhaegar should have acted, you know, would have acted. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I imagine getting this news, it would, it may bother Danny that John is struggling with it. And I would definitely think that John does struggle with it. But for Danny, it's, uh, yeah, it's great news. That's awesome. You know, not only am I falling in love with this guy, but he turns, it turns out he's not a bastard. He's actually, he's, he's a Targaryen. You know, he's, he's part of my family, so I'm not alone. And she's learned her entire life that, you know, incestual relations is not only okay, it's actually, you know, preferred. For her house, for her family, for for where her family came from, for Valeria, from her point of view, from mm-hmm. what she's been told, that's what separates Valerian Targaryen from the rest of the known world. To keep the bloodlines pure, to make sure that they are they continue to be, I don't want to say master race, but top of the line race of of Westerosians, incest is the way to go. From her point of view, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that, even though it's really frowned upon in Westeros, unless you're a Targaryen. So yeah, this is probably great news for her. The only thing, I, I don't know that Sam and Bran will be okay telling John this in front of Daenerys. And I think it's also important to note, you, you and I both think that John is the rightful king of Westeros. We're serious about it, we joke about it, but you know, in reality, in what's going on in Game of Thrones now, even A Song of Ice and Fire... For John to get this news, it, it's not that he is the rightful king. It's he has the best claim, but it's been so many years. And if you're going by Westerosi law, you can't just award the throne to Jon Snow because Robert Baratheon won. Mm-hmm. He won the Iron Throne by right of conquest. It's that's law. And and however that gets from Robert to Cersei, it gets from Robert to Cersei. So Cersei by Westerosi law is Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. And just because John is Rhaegar's son, that doesn't mean the realm will make him king. Like he'll still have to win the Iron Throne back by right of conquest, the same way that that Robert won it. But he does have the best claim if he even makes that claim. But that's not obviously the issue at hand in this trailer or for John. No matter who he is or or who he's told that he is, he's not going to be. It will bother him. He'll worry about it. But it's the battle that's coming that he's going to be most concerned with. You know, I talked about this the other night. As far as John finding out and Bran and Sam telling him this news, I feel like it's something they should maybe save for after the battle. I I, I disagree. I I think it has, uh, and I actually have a comment from the uh, from the EW article that came out the couple days you know, the day before the trailer came out, mm-hmm. and it's something from Kit Harrington. Uh, Kit Harrington says, "Ah, uh, uh, God, I can't the exact question. I should have wrote that down." But, you know, that's May for you. He Power says freezing. something like, uh, he's finally found this woman that he's in love with, me and Danny. And although all this stuff's going on around him, he knows exactly who he is and what he has to do. I'm not sure he says what he has to do. He, knows, he, he said he knows who he is and what he's meant to do, kind of. Stating that he okay. knows that John knows, you know, that he is, okay. you know, the son of Rhaegar and Lyanna. And then, boom, the sledgehammer, you know, comes a.k.a. me, the Night's King army. The only way I look at it where it would be a good thing for him to know with this battle coming is Sam and Bran both feel that he is the one to lead the battle against the Long Night, the battle against the others, the White Walkers. Mm-hmm. And when Sam learns who John is, it magnifies that thought. Yeah, well, Br- well, Sam said it back in Season 7. He's, he says there's no doubt that John's the one that, le- that is the one to lead the fight against the dead. He has no doubt. So Sam and Bran, I mean, Bran has no filter. So he, you know, he's not thinking about John's reaction to the news, but Sam thinks that this will, although Sam doesn't know that John is with Daenerys, but Sam thinks that this news of who John really is will make him a better fighter, a better leader. He knows. He knows that John's with Daenerys? Yeah, Bran tells him. That like they're having sex? Oh no, that not. That. Oh yeah, no, no yeah, that, no. That, 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 that's, that. that's what I mean. That they're falling in love. I feel like Sam might be a little more hesitant to to tell him if he knew that. But my point being is, John's geared up for this battle. He's been ready for this battle. He sought out the entirety of of Westeros for an alliance. 
because he knows that this is the battle. This is it. Life versus death, the biggest battle ever. And then he's going to get this bomb dropped on him mentally right before the battle. You want Jon Snow, 110% Jon Snow. You don't want Jon Snow in a meta crisis, you know, an emotional crisis because he doesn't know who he is. Well, he knows who he is, but who he thought he was, that's not who he is. He's actually, you know, he's actually a prince. And Daenerys, who he just bent the knee to, is actually his aunt. You know, there's all these the ramifications that go along with this truth. Mm. How can somebody compartmentalize that going into this battle? But I guess, you know, once you once you see the White Walkers and it's there's nothing yeah, it's, else to worry it's about. It's game time. You can't be worried about yeah. claims and yeah. uh, who's doing this and that. And in a way, John's been prepared for this the entire time because all the things that were happening to his family while he was up at the wall, he stayed focused for the most part. He wavered a few times like we talked about in the – the Bran or a Sansa episode, the taking of Winterfell, Bran and Rickon being thought dead. All these things happened while he was up at the wall and he stayed focused on task at hand, becoming Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, hard home, the unification with the Wildings. He did amazing things up at the wall. In that sense, he's become very good at compartmentalizing any crisis happening to, to his family or, or outside of his control that greatly affects him. He is still able to carry on. So looking at it that way, if anybody can handle this news and still do the job, it's John. We start to get images of fighting while John speaks, right? We have the Gendry, uh, Gendry birth. The first part uh, after John is in the crypts. We see uh, Gendry walk around overlooking the blacksmiths, making, I guess, we suppose, dragon glass weapons. Where do we leave Gendry at the end of season seven? Uh, picked up by Davos after running. <laughs> right. He knew exactly where he was going at the wall somehow. He, he knew exactly, you know, mm-hmm. southwest by 10 meters. <laughs> well, get me to the wall. I get help. Was, was he with... Um, I don't remember. I do remember Davos picking him up and then... No, I know. That that, but was, did he go down south to King's Landing with with all of to meet with Cersei? I don't believe so. I don't think he did. No, so he was just, he was just off camera because he still has... He still hasn't uh, met, reunited with Ari yet. So right. he's still in that Winterfell. So I guess we'll see that next year. All, you know, this we'll see that, you know, also. You think he's at the wall? No. No. I think he was absent from the entirety of episode seven. Really? Is that, that's, yeah, I, I think so. think about that now. Yeah. I gotta, that's something to look for. Was he there with like Davos and. Well, Davos goes to King's Landing, but Gendry definitely did not. Actually, I can't even say definitely did not, but yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. recall him being being there. I feel like I, I would remember. All right, so Gendry obviously doing some blacksmithing yeah. for a- Yeah, here's the big thing. The next scene that we see is your man, everyone's favorite, friend zone, <laughs> <laughs> Jorah preparing for war. Now, here's the big thing. Look at that sword he has. That looks like a pretty big sword handle. Okay. Look at the sword. I'm thinking that Samuel Tarly gave him heart's pain. Oh, because Sam's not going to use it. No way in hell. Why not give it to the son of the man who helped save his life a couple, quite a few times in Jira Momot? And the commanders in this battle have to have. You would think that all of yeah. them, well, all of them have that now that they're, they're being all equipped with like dragon glass spears and other weapons, but you would think that like. But the dragon, uh, this, I meant to ask you this yeah. also, the dragon glass. I mean, Valyrian steel is is effective on the White Walkers themselves. Mm-hmm. What about dragon glass? It's effective on the Whites, but on the White no, Walkers, on the White Walkers also, yeah. Because okay. remember, remember Sam and back in what season three or season oh, four, oh right, 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 yes. stabbed. So that's crucial too. But at the same time, you know, the commanders of this battle are we're looking like we're going to have the four major commanders are going to be John Valyrian steel sword, mm-hmm. uh, Jorah Mormont. This is Heart's Bane, Valyrian steel sword. Okay. You're going to have Arya, Arya with the uh, Valyrian steel dagger. Right. Brienne. And you have Brienne with Oathkeeper. Of, with Oathkeeper. And you have Jamie with Widow's Whale. Did Jamie, that's what I, Jamie took Widow's Whale? We know for sure. Oh, he has to come out. Why would he bring that? They should have shown him take it. He's always had it. Ever since like season six, he's had it. Why wouldn't he have it? He has Widow's Did he Whale. have it? Oh, okay. I, I, yeah. I thought it was with Joffrey. And then when Joffrey died, it was just. No, no, he took it. Around. He took it on. Wise move by Jamie. Yeah. Always planning ahead that Jamie Lannister. Yeah. <laughs> One hand washes the other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until it doesn't, because you don't have it. So then you really got to think ahead. 
those would be your big captains, I guess. So you, you yeah. know, your four, yeah. your four lieutenants. Put Brienne in charge of the reserves, though. You don't really want her. Well, she she's on the front line. She looks at the front line. But now I, I just said right there, you have like the four lieutenants. Let's also go back up to the Night's King's army. Remember, he always looks like he has like four horsemen also, the four guys. It's him and three other guys. Beauty. Beauty guy. Yeah. Baldy. Bald, beauty Baldy. <laughs> brand looking. Well, he's that's the Night's King is the brand looking one. Beauty's the one that stands out the most. But yeah, that's interesting. I yeah. agree with you. I think uh, I think Jorah does have knights. Uh, have it, would make, it, would make, it would make perfect sense. Right. The uh, next scene we see Grey Worm kissing Masande as he prepares for war. As much as I hate this storyline, that was pretty effective shot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next shot I like a lot, too. A lot of people thought it was Jimmy Lannister or someone else, but it's actually Brianna Tarth. If you look carefully enough, it's Brianna Tarth cutting down at me, looking badass. Should have whipped out her Captain Phasma armor. This battle. Yeah. <laughs> um, and here's here's a scene that we I thought maybe he said John, but it's Jamie screaming at distress. You say I thought it was John at first. Bra- I think it's Braun. He's saying Braun. It did it, it did sound like he wasn't saying John. It didn't have that John. It, there's definitely an on going on or something. Yeah. So it looks like it's yeah. There's an on going on. Yeah, <laughs> looks like he could be screaming for Braun or Ron. Maybe there's a yeah. guy. In, <laughs> Ron. The, the guy your friend's name Ron. <laughs> Uh, or maybe John's like John's like, what should I name my kid? He's like Don. <laughs> I'm, I'm like ninety five. Yeah. That that was a six shot of Jamie. That was a, that was mm-hmm. a six shot of Brienne cutting down an enemy right into Jamie screaming in distress. That was really sick because now it's like now you're starting to see like this battle's really not working out too well. Yeah, you know you yeah. can really start seeing that it's going to be a lot of damage. And then it just goes right to the throne room. It goes right there. It cuts that. It goes right to throne room. Cersei has company. It looks like it's Harry Strickland and Euron to the side. It makes a lot of sense that it is Harry Strickland. Yeah, it's probably from episode one after he arrives. It's just, you know, because mm-hmm. the, the next scene after this is Cersei drinking wine. Now, this uh, scene. She's not pregnant. If she's drinking wine, then she's not pregnant. Well, not necessarily, but. Well, yeah, she's. I don't think they would go. I don't think they. I, I think that's. I think it's just foretelling that she's not pregnant. And that's what it seems like. And then, what do you think? She looks happy, then sad, then happy. Is that did I get that right? I think that Quiburn gives her news that should make her happy, but it's not quite bittersweet. It's just she wants to give off that this is the news I wanted. So good, but there's an underlying sadness and like a great sadness. So, do you? Th- well, see, it's possible he, it's the baby that she lost the baby. Here's my thing, and it goes back to if you think that's Jamie's death, I don't think Jamie dies in episode three. I, I I don't think, and it goes back to what I said before. I just don't think that they've showed scenes from after episode from after episode three. So I don't think it's Jamie's dying. Yeah, that was my initial thought when I saw it. Is it's possible? Yeah. It's possible, but. It would be very, you know, looking back on it, look back like, wow, they gave that shot away and sees that, you know, from episode five or something. Or maybe there was a report, you know, the Alliance lost Winterfell. And not, She's happy, then not many, not Jamie. many survived. Maybe she had asked about Jamie. It, it doesn't look like Jamie survived. But that, would, but that would still be episode four, though. I, I still, I, I, you, you know, you never know, but I still, I don't know. I, I just think that all this is coming through episodes one through three. Oh, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying like she, it's almost like a false report that Jamie's dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, she thinks well, she's dead. Possible. Yeah. But she does, she looks very sad. She looks sad throughout this entire trailer, I think. Honestly, in, in our episode, the final, Who Lives, Who Dies. I think for both of us, maybe a few of those characters has changed. I do think Jamie may, I think Jamie may see this through. No, I think, I think he's dead. <laughs> see, you were thinking he lives. I was thinking he's dead. Yeah. Now uh, they were both uh, going back on it. All right. So after, after that shot of Cersei. It's uh, Drogon and Rago flying around with the fell. Great visual. Awesome. And it's really bright for the, for the first few times in this trailer. You just said, I mean, yeah, it's really, it's an awesome visual. Mm-hmm. That sense of warmth that I was talking about before. This mm-hmm. is, is, you know, this is where it comes in, and really you know, the only section of the trailer that it's not bright and happy, but it's not. Yeah, it's not doom and gloom. Right. Uh, the next scene is Arya looking scared a little bit at first, then she's like astonished and what the fell while other people are running around for their safety, probably looking at the dragons. I imagine. I mean, someone like Arya was really really wants to see the dragon. We, we want to see the dragon. She would, and I think the dragons do impress her, but I think the look of 
happiness or amazement that she has isn't at the dragons. I think it's that she knows John has arrived. Possible, yeah. Because it feels like I, I might be wrong. I feel like everybody around her is bugging out about the dragons, excited about the dragons. And it seems like Arya is looking not so much up at the dragons as forward as John and Danny come riding in, not on dragons. I could be wrong. The next part is the best dialogue of the uh, the trailer. Yeah. Jamie's dialogue. Oh, dude, it was, you know, I was so excited. Mm -hmm. I promise to fight for the living. I intend to keep that promise. Okay, has Jamie's stock with this trailer, has it gone up more for Oh, dude, it's going up. It's going up. It's going up. And I definitely think that he's in Winterfell right there. Yes. At first, I I was questioning a little bit, was he in Winterfell? Was maybe in the Riverlands? I think he's in Winterfell. I think the Winterfell people are questioning him, wanting to kill him. And he's saying, listen, basically, whatever happened, I came up here to fight with you guys against the dead. You're saying like the Northern Lords and the Lords yeah. of the Vale, you think that they're like, question, it's the Kingslayer. Yeah, exactly. He was responsible for the Red Wedding. Yeah. Yeah, that's possible. He pushed Bran out the window. I think that line's more in response to, you know, he shows up and it's just like him and Bran. And uh, he tells them that Cersei has no intention of helping them. And maybe they'll, well, why, you know, why are you here? Then, you know, if, if the queen is reneging on her promise to help us, why are you here? I made a promise to fight for the living. I intend to keep that promise. Fucking awesome, dude. Truest knight in the realm right there. Sir Jamie Lannister. Do we get more fighting right after that? Uh, shots over dialogue. You have Grey Worm putting a helmet on preparing for war. Next shot is of John in front of the Winterfell Heart Tree. Yeah. Oh, my God. Great shot. I thought that was a great shot. There's a lot of great shots in this trailer. Yeah. Like a lot of like gray, like wide angle shots. The next shot is at first I didn't know who it was, but now I was watching some other videos. It's a shot of Sandor Clegane, who looks like he's uh, around some fire. So it looks like he's getting used to fire now all of a sudden. It was a close up of him, right? Yeah. At first I didn't know who it was. I thought maybe it was, was it Euron? Was it John? Maybe it was a Tyrion mix. It looked like there's a little more of a beard action going on. Mm -hmm. And then other people said it was, uh, Sandor. Yeah. It was Sandor. You know, he's going to have to get over his fear of fire. He has to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the only way you're beating the whites. Then uh, after this, there's no more dialogue. We see a shot of someone holding a spear. Could be an unsullied guy. Uh, John running from the battle. Very intense. We talked that before, I think, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, he was running. Um, dude, he was running like Rick Grimes, like Tom yeah, Cruise. Yeah, I know. think he was running away. I, I, you said before that we... You don't think someone like him or Arya would run away like that unless they really had to. I think this was a situation where he he knew he lost. I disagree because he had people behind him. He's like the last guy to run. I think that this is Danny's in danger, Arya's in danger, so, you know, somebody's in danger and he's running to save them. But that's possible. All the same, I do think it's a very, very bleak situation, mm -hmm. you know, where he's going to save this person and then escape. That's some intense acting on uh, Kit Harrington's part. Who is really, really short in real life. And I don't yeah, think. Yeah, he's very short. He's like oh five foot six, five foot seven. Wow, man. He's yeah. very short. That's incredible. Uh, I, had, I, I would never have guessed that. <laughs> well, it's all about, you know, a lot yeah, of sight. Yeah. You know, they always make people look taller, on, yeah. you know. I've been doing it to Tom Cruise for years. Yeah, exactly. Tom Cruise is really five foot two. <laughs> yeah. He's <laughs> like four six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the next scene, the next shot we have is of uh, John and Danny. They're walking towards Strogon and Rhaegal. This is perhaps one of the foreshadowing. Will they have, will John ride Rhaegal? Because it kind of, you know, I don't think at this scene he will, but maybe later on will he? Maybe, possibly. I think he definitely rides a dragon, yeah. I do think he rides a dragon. Obviously, it'd be Rhaegal that he, yeah. that he rides. The one named after his father, and obviously the whole one that doesn't, you know, wouldn't have. And I think they might have to think about it, you know, after they find out, if just say Danny finds out that, you know, it's Rhaegar's son that, you know, that's why the Drogon, that's why Drogon liked you. You know, listen, you know, maybe one of the reasons why Viserion was taken down was because no one was riding him. We need someone to ride him so he can dodge, mm -hmm. you know, uh, dodge some the ice spears and weapons that the Night's King can have. Yeah, bro. I don't know. I don't know if anybody's dodging the way that guy throws a spear, though. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That was an eight, that was a uh, that was a that was a shot right there. Yeah, let me tell you. yeah, and the whole Heisman fucking yeah, that like, <laughs> was awesome. Uh, the next shot is Sansa looking worried. 
I don't recall this. Yeah, it was just uh, it was a very it was a very quick shot. She looked uh, I wasn't say worried, but you can tell she's got that Sansa face going on. You know what I'm saying? Where where was she? This is when she was on. I think it was a different shot. Okay, but she was in Winterfell. It was just a different place in Winterfell. You couldn't really tell where where it was exactly. The next shot, it's a real awesome shot. It's it's a picture of Arya, a shot of Arya, you know, fighting her bravosi style against an enemy. Again, it looks like it's Winterfell, but maybe it's a King's Landing. I'm going to still go with that. It's Winterfell because it's, mm-hmm. again, we're, we're taking the shots, it seems like, from the earlier episodes. But it could be maybe even a shot at uh, King's Landing when they get down to King's Landing. It could be, but I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to give any of that away at mm-hmm. all in any trailers. Yeah. The rumor is, and I don't, I don't know if it's a rumor or if it's fact that the it's episode three that is going to be biggest battle uh, ever made, longest, yeah, and and that's TV obviously, but also also for movies also right. When I think about long battles in movies, obviously I think about Gondor, Pelennor Fields, mm-hmm. and uh, Helm's, Helm's Deep. Deep. Yeah, Helm's Deep was actually longer than Pelennor Fields. Really? Yeah, Helm's Deep was like forty two minutes. I don't think we should get into speculation as far as they lose that battle and then they fight him again or they win that battle, you know, but, uh, safe to say most of the scenes, the action scenes. Yeah. It looks like, yeah, it's hitting from the action scenes alone. You think that this is just not going to end well for the heroes. And also you think though, too, you still need one more. You're going to need another victory for the Knights King before you, you need another victory for him. Yeah. You build up this, existential threat and then it becomes a physical threat and then like the first battle it's like ah, we beat him <laughs> everybody's like oh I guess you were wrong John <laughs> yeah like, that was it <laughs> the next shot is the Danny scene where, where she looks worried and what the felt the little room that she's in and this could be about any number of things yeah we, we, you know, it could be you know about her being pregnant uh, John being John, now right. sketchy about their relationship yeah it could be or, anything there John's claim to the throne being better than hers. It's possible. It's more like a Sansa thing to think. Yeah. Especially at this point in time after what Danny, I, I think Danny's really, when she saw the battle of the, uh, the, uh, the, the army of the dead, I think she's really realizing that the throne is. She's better off a Marine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the throne is not really for her. And they're not really for her, but it, 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 it can wait. Okay. I'm yeah. not gonna I'm not gonna be able to rule anyways if I can't defeat this army anyways. So what's the point? I thought that when she lost Viserion, that you know, raising the stakes with her losing Viserion really hammered home the situation she was in. Are you saying that at some point in the final episode she's No, no, I feel it and when Initially she definitely thought like, All right, John, I'll I'll help you with your against your zombies but and then you'll, you'll help me day. take King's Landing, like no problem. You know, I got dragons, no problem. Not expecting what happened beyond the wall and whatever happens at Winterfell, you know those things really being like a, a reality check for her. I, it just when it, when as you just said, it's when Viserion dies. I think she that's when she realizes because mm. she says it to John. You have to see it to really know it. Talking about it is one thing to actually see this army. You have to re, you you have to look at it. You have to see it. Hmm. It is a bit tricky for Martin for Benioff and Weiss. With this threat, and then to finally come into conflict with it in the final episodes, it's it, it's tricky. You've built it up so much, and like you said, it can't just be one battle, can it? Even if it's the longest battle in history, can it just be one battle? There's there's no way. I wouldn't think. I don't speculate too much on it. What's next in the trailer? Uh, the quick and only shot of Tyrion and Lannister, yes. which is followed very quickly by. Drogon fire, blowing fire through his mouth. Could this be a foreshadow of future events? So I, mean, I know it's, it's obviously a different scene. It's not the same scene. That you know, Tyrion's obviously looking up at something. Maybe it's the dragons, but maybe it's it's not this scene. But it, it's clever kind of, editing. Yeah, it's yeah. It makes it look like you know, is Tyrion in trouble with the dragon? Now this is your the second thing you think is foreshadowing. Yeah. The third thing, which you're forgetting, has not come to my head right now. No. <laughs> but do you know if the third thing happens after this? No, it had would have happened before. Oh, okay, I don't know why. Maybe, 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 maybe there was only maybe there was only two things, but I thought maybe there was three. All right. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's you know I'm sure there's a lot more more than three, but uh, you know those are the major ones. That's towards the end of the trailer, though, Tyrion. Yeah, because there's there's two more shots of it, and that's it. There's the uh, 
Alliance army of unsullied and Northmen preparing for battle. Uh, someone brought this up that the, uh, the soldiers, the, not the unsullied and not the Dothraki, but the soldiers are wearing breastplates of combined Targaryen Stark logos. Really? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't check that. I saw that someone said that. I forgot who where, where it was, but they. they you know what? I, I really hope they're not because the implication would be somebody's mass producing <laughs> <laughs> outfits for the insulting, like what on the trip to Winterfell. <laughs> we don't go time for weapons, but here's a brand new bunch yeah. of armor for you, Northmen. Supposedly, if the Northmen are wearing breastplates of uh, Targaryen and uh, Stark uh, breastplates, the Direwolf and the Dragon. I hope not. I'm sure it would look cool, but I hope not. It would look really cool. I, uh, Unless they have a real good explanation for how it was mass produced for all the yeah. unsullied. Well, you're, you're, you're thinking too much like uh, like Pat right now. Well, yeah. Like, well, they could have time to mass the produce this. this is, you know. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Go Prometheus. Yeah. <laughs> Prometheus rules. Great movie. Here's another thing I've always said though too, and we see the armies, and it's not, but it's like the heroes. They they had they leave like hats and helmets off the heroes. Shore is now wearing a hat or helmet. Yeah. The yeah, we see. We also see Podrick. I mean, don't you want some armor on your head? Yeah. And also, it's probably like fifty below. You're gonna freaking freeze to death. Yeah. You know, fighting Terrell men at arms here. All these guys not wearing a helmet. They all saw the accuracy of the Nice King with his javelin. Like, wear a helmet. For some reason, that stuff, I'm like, I can live with that more so than if the Unsullied had, like, a Stark Targaryen. Well, no, the, the Unsullied don't. It's this, this Northman habit. Yeah. The Unsullied still have their own, you know, <laughs> uniforms. Jojen had a green dream about all this happening. So they block Golden Man. Yeah. And the grips. She's been like, she's been like selling this stuff since season two. And the final shot of the trailer is Jorah Mormont, uh, who also appears to be the front line one with Brianna Pod, is looking and distance. You see, all you see is dead horse legs are shown. And the trailer ends. Now, do you think Jorah is in the front lines like a uh, fu to Daenerys? Like, all right, you, all right, you want to be with you want to be with, you want to be with John. I'm going to show you. <laughs> no, no, I just think I'm going to win this point, war single handedly. Yeah, he, as we said before, I, I, it looks like he's got a Valerian steel sword. All the, the people are, are going to be up there in the front lines with the Valerian steel swords. Hmm. And he's, a, you know, he, at, the, at this point, he's like a sub major character now at this point. Yeah. So, like, you know, you're not going to put him, you know, in the back. Okay. So let's do, let's do your foreshadowing. Well, it's the Tyrion and, and Drogon. Is that the foreshadowing that Drogon's going to burn Tyrion uh, al- alive? Yeah, if he betrays John and Danny. Do you think this could be the editors of this trailer, Benny and Weiss, trolling? Yes, that theory. Yes, it could. Yes, it could very well be. It could so, very well be. I feel like it's a little bit too on the nose. Yeah, which in a way I don't want to. Oh, they'll say it off here. I don't want to say it. I don't want to take any shots. I'll say it off here. <laughs> The other thing is... Is John, Ryan, and Regal. Okay. Is that, I, again, is that just bending off and Weiss just, you know, planting that there to... Is it too obvious then with that shot of Dan, John and Danny seeing the dragons? Well, there's a shot of the dragons flying, and it. I don't think it's over Winterfell. It looks like it's over, like, a, a mountainous kind of area. You, you know, well, the should, north. The north. It's possible, and this is a a tool that a lot of trailers use now. They show a scene. That's just made for the trailer. That's not going to be in the uh, show or movie. Or the new one is they show a scene, but it's not edited as the final product will be. So, for example, the the Avengers Endgame trailer, they're all walking. It, it looks like they're queens by City Field, but they're all there's a big space between Bruce Banner and War Machine or whoever. You know, so the theory is like he's really the Hulk there, or there's another character there. That they don't want to spoil anything, so they, they mm-hmm. edit it to look like. Point being, when those dragons were flying, I would think it's Danny and John flying on the dragons, but they don't have Danny or John on it. It's just the dragons in the trailer. It could be. I, I, I'm not sure if they would go that far, though. I, I don't think that they're going to 
uh, spoil John riding a dragon in the trailer. But I think of the two foreshadowing regarding Ben Affleck trolling us with that edit, if that's the case, it is, you know, on the other hand, it is really odd, really odd for a character so universally loved as Tyrion Lannister, so heavily featured in basically every other trailer coming into every other uh, season of Game of Thrones, for him to not not only just be in one shot, but for him to not have a line of dialogue. Mm-hmm. Every single, every single trailer, he has a line of dialogue. Right, and, and nothing, it's almost like they're holding back on him. Yeah. The trailer is just as effective without that shot of Tyrion and then that edit. That makes me believe that he does, spoiler again, he does betray Danny and John because he's just in the one shot. Why wasn't he with Varys and the and you know the Winterfell people in the crypts? Why wasn't he anywhere? Like he's the hand to the queen. Like why is he not? What's the deal? Where is he? It definitely makes you think. It really does. I mean, obviously, I can't say definitively one way or the other, but you could argue easily both sides from this trailer. Mm-hmm. It does feel like we're getting trolled, but it also why is he not in any other any other segment of this trailer? Not even, not even in like another like split second, like non dialogue shot. If that's the only shot he's in. I said before that I think this trailer kind of functions as its own, its own mini story because you have the prologue section, which is Arya's dialogue that leads to, to the fade to black. And then you get the April 14th. So that functions as a prologue section mm-hmm. where she's saying her line, very confident that she's looking forward to meeting. The others, the White Walkers, the Whites, she's looking forward to this battle, intercut with her, running for her life frantically. And mm-hmm. then we get the act one of this trailer, which is the brand dialogue. Everything you've done has led you to here, where you belong, home, as John and Danny return home. And this is like the, like I said, not bright, but it's warm. And then the act two, which in every story is the conflict. This is John saying, our enemy doesn't tire, he doesn't feel. And then the final act, which is the resolution, is Jamie's line of dialogue. I made a promise to fight for the living. I intend to keep that promise. It's almost like it's, it sets up like the fear that will be in this final season. Bran's dialogue is what basically what everybody is fighting for. You know, when he says home, yeah, he means, mm-hmm. he probably means Winterfell to John, but it, that can work for every character looking at Westeros as home. That's where everyone belongs, home, the greatest cause to fight for. And then John's dialogue talking about what the enemy is. Now it's really upon them. You get Jamie's dialogue, which is really the resolution of this trailer. And, and I'm really speaking meta- metaphorically, but like he's, not, he's fighting like it, it doesn't matter. We made this promise to fight for a living. We're not going to back down from it. And if we lose, it's our lives we're going to lose. But we made this promise. And speaking to, to Jamie's character arc, but speaking to everybody that's there and the character arcs of stories they've all been through over these nine years. You know, in that sense, I really can't get enough of this trailer. I just think it's brilliant. For a TV show, it's it's possibly one of the best ever. It's right up there with a feature, a feature film. Obviously, the budget for the final episodes is higher than anything they've they've done, but every single shot, it not only is it feature film quality, but it's better than a lot of feature film. And some of that may be, like we said at the onset, the investment and the passion we have for the series, our relationship with the characters, how long and intimate it has been, that adds to it. But every shot was was gorgeous in its own way, and it didn't give anything away. It just leads to more speculation, but it didn't give away anything, and it was a lot of footage. I might say that this is one of the best trailers I've ever seen. Now, I'm confident saying that TV series, this is one of the best trailers I've ever seen. Do you disagree? Do you think there were other Game of Thrones trailers that were better? Yeah, I think I, I, think I watched them last week. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, because I, I was because I'm yeah, you know, I was thinking like, when's this trailer hitting? Let me let me just watch them. I think it was the best one they've had, and I'll tell you why. Also, I'm not sure what kind of music they had. Was it was a original piece by Roman Dejuati? That was my next but point. Is the music was it was actually oh like theme music? It wasn't like the re, you know, like the covered songs of like pop songs that they were using the previous uh, trailers they used, which were fine, mm-hmm. but 
But for this, like the music, after like that, when it fades, that first fade after you see the Aria shot, and all of a sudden you hear that music come in, you just have this sense, just as you were saying before about like, you know, the prologue and all that, blah, blah, blah. And seen, also seeing the music really fit in well with what this trailer was trying to show. Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems like, uh, Raman Javardi has outdone himself again, just based on the music in this trailer. Do you have anything else directly related to the trailer? That you want to uh, point out? I think I, well, I think I got everything. I think <laughs> definitely pretty thorough. <laughs> Do you got uh, anything else? Anything you want to mention? Talk about? Point out? No, I don't. I don't. There's nothing else I can think of. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the trailer. It did its job and then some. And honestly, I don't want any more trailers or anything. Until April fourteenth, I'm I'm good. John, do you want another trailer? Oh, you know I always want more. Yeah, you want it. You want to, you want to score oh, at this point. I want all six episodes leap right now tonight. Uh, I feel like I feel like if it was like an hour away from airtime I'd for the last the for the last episode, and there was a script leak, I'd watch it. I'd, I'd have to. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Find us facebook.com slash the Promise Princes. We're on Twitter at Prince is Promised. Read the Westerosi Companion, the Princes That Were Promised.com. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify. We're on YouTube. Thank you for listening, and we'll speak with you guys next time. <laughs>